individual or uh, people related with an, uh, with uh, this particular individual you need to have little bit of uh, understanding about the human being okay that is not uh, what you see a person there can be many hidden agenda about a person or about the family background or about uh, uh, the innate behaviors of that particular person all these matters when you work with the with an individual or when you work with the family so all these uh, for uh, to understand about a human being it is very important that you need to have some of the uh, human psychology okay and uh, just to we'll see um, i have a powerpoint presentation of uh, like uh, what is uh, psychology or uh, uh, about its history and why psychology is also very important okay like there were there are many um, there were many criticisms about uh, um, uh, like psychology different types of psychology different, different types of views were given what is psychology it is just a, a combination of many elements some people some uh, theorists or some psychologists said it is uh, a combination of only some elements or structuring human mind but uh, some people said that okay no it, some criticize that it is not uh, only a, a combination of elements in mind but it is a, it is organizing how to organize the things or it is to understand the nature of the person uh, our behaviorism is very important uh, all these uh, things were criticized so we'll just see uh, or uh, what different types of criticism were given by different psychologists okay let me share the ppt and we'll see what how when it in which century this began the study on psychology began and how it is related to the human being we will see an introduction what is psychology so it is a scientific study of mind and behavior in humans and non humans okay so uh, mainly uh, we have to understand as you are all counsel students of counseling or you are doing your diploma in counseling it is very important that what a person perceives or how the person's cognitive power is how what type of perception the pers particular person has of what type of uh, behavior uh, he has learned or uh, is there any deviation in the behavior or is the, is the behavior is acceptable in the society so all these uh, the study of all these uh, is related to psychology and so that is why it is known as a scientific study of mind okay it also includes the study of conscious and unconscious phenomena um, uh, the present condition of the particular human being or whenever the person in in his unconscious mind what his feelings and thoughts are uh, so that is also very important uh, to understand okay so all these are included in psychology once you learn all these uh, aspects about a human being then only it will be able it is easy for you to go along get along with that particular human being to help whatever the problem the particular individual is having so that is why it is said that it is a study of mind and behavior and also it is an academic discipline of immense scope crossing the boundaries between natural and social sciences okay natural uh, natural means it's related to environment it is related to the um, up, upbringing or innate behavior of a particular person okay social sciences means it is related to the society how the particular person sees a, a society or what what the learn learnings he has got from the um, society or what influences or how the how what is the perception level of that particular person all these are these are when you listen when you hear or when you understand about things you will feel that oh it is so easy to understand but it is it is a challenging thing that you understand about a person uh, what a person maybe uh, the outer outer information about a person may not be what he is thinking in his mind or what what goes into his mind or what is thinking about a particular aspect so so that is what psychology is a very important aspect related to a counseling student so when you go into the history it says that it has its roots roots in philosophy uh, the reality of uh, the is uh, situation and it did not emerge as a separate discipline okay uh, these were together and uh, uh, until the late 18th uh, century its earliest history can be tracked back to the time of early greeks so uh, there was a french philosopher rene descartes introduced the idea of dualism he says that mind and body are two separate entities that interact to form the human experience okay so uh, we have to give much thrust to the um, um, uh, that thinking capacity of a person okay uh, only a physical uh, situation or uh, the physical structure of the person cannot express all the things the mind or the perception of the cognitive power of a person is also very important as i said that what um, what uh, just looking into a, a structure of a person or physical 
physical structure of a person we cannot uh, point out all the things or whatever is but the mindset of a individual is also very important and it is not that easy to understand the mindset so that is why there are many approaches there are many techniques to learn about that uh, particular human mind okay and that is what you have a, a great responsibility of understanding a person so as i said there were many criticisms in the early times that psychology um, many uh, schools of thought had certain criticism first they said that it is structuralism which suggested that psychology should focus only on the basic structures of human mind okay it is purely about the uh, physio of a particular mind or the nerves on the nervous system or the brain structure that is what um, uh, uh, some uh, some learned people used to say that okay but that was criticized by gestalt Um, psychology that uh, it is not only the structure of the um, mind is important but it is made of the combination of many elements it is not about the chemical agents that is uh, uh, the mind is made up of but it is the proper organization or uh, um, the proper makeup of uh, the um, uh, these elements are very very important and that is uh, that is what they said and that was known as gestalt psychology okay the german word gestalt means form or configuration and the that is a proper formation of the mind is very very important when a person is in difficulty uh, the person may have uh, many uh, situations or many um, brain, uh, chemical agents in the brain uh, con giving confusions or giving tension or anxiety but proper formation of all these chemical agents in the brain or, or the proper nervous system or the nerves or the thousands and millions of nervous nerves in the brain system gives you a pro there should be a proper combination of all these things and these people uh, criticized on that that uh, there should be a proper form of configuration and they said that the mind should be thought of resulting from the whole pattern of sensory activity and the relationship and organizations within the pattern that is what i said there should be a proper combination there should be a proper uh, networking of all these things then only uh, the mind of a human being uh, can be balanced in a better way and that is what gestalt psychology tells us and this it, this was also um Uh, like criticized by uh, some functionalists they suggested they say they said that field should focus on the functions of consciousness what a person in his present mind that is what is mind okay it is not we don't have to uh, work on the um, physical or the nervous system of uh, the mind or brain whatever it is that is not there is nothing uh, to say about the nervous system or the nerves or the stru physical structure of a particular mind but what a person functions during particular present moment and that is more important uh, to study okay so that was criticized by john dewey and james r angle in uh, late it uh, like um, in the later like 19th century etc and um, they said that what my uh, uh, functionalism is more important that means what mind and behavior do okay the mind expresses a person to do such an act and that is what that is what a psychology is and that is what more important is especially they were interested in the fact that mind and behavior are adaptive and they enable an individual to adjust to the changing environment it is the combination or it is a balancing um, balance between the mind and behavior and the person um, gets an information in the brain that what the particular person has to do and that helps the, to change a particular a person and so for that mind and behavior both the combination of both is very very important okay later behaviorism um, again functionalism was a little bit of criticized and behaviorism came into uh, more on line like okay so that Uh, behaviorism said pointed out that only observable overt activity whatever it is apparent or whatever is you can see through your uh, naked eyes that is more important and that is what we have to work on the psychology okay i hope it is clear to you hello can you hear yes sir yes sir yeah so later on um, the there were some uh, again the, the, these things were criticized and behaviorism a term a concept came into uh, the came uh, uh, into the study or uh, people studied on this that whatever you observe about a person what is the present condition of a person that is more important or what is apparent that should be measured scientifically and then that should be handled with care okay or that should be uh, and that 
uh, aspect should be worked with that particular human being. That is why later on, many intelligence tests, psychological techniques, all these were uh, researched, uh, researches were done all these areas. And we know that there are many uh, tests, intelligence tests, okay, to find out the present condition of a person, what he is perceiving or the particular human being is perceiving at that moment. Okay, so that is what uh, later on was uh, more on given uh, importance uh, behaviorism okay so models uh, then behaviorism or, or for much longer time there was behaviorism uh, the psychologist uh, depended on behaviorism they worked on the people and they used to observe or uh, what is overt overt means it is uh, what you it is what is open or what uh, what you can see with the naked eye that is should be given more importance and that that was uh, for, for a long time behaviorism was into the existence for a long time later on um, modern psychology in short, we can say that uh, this modern psychology is a science of behavior and cognitive process. Later on, it was finally in, in the modern situation, we can say that uh, the uh, um, psychology is a science of behavior and cognitive process. It studies all the human behavior, everything what we think, feel, experience or uh, all these are related to the uh, psychology okay what you th see in a person what a person behaves what uh, the person the way he speaks the way he talks the way uh, the gestures the postures all these are related to behavior and that will uh, tell us about what a difficult what a person um, thinks about or what uh, what a person has experienced in his life all these will uh, uh, tell about a person and so for as a counseling uh, um, like when you practice uh, the this counseling course or when you work with the individual it is very important that you understand a person or you observe a person what he expresses how he exp what experiences tells uh, um, about uh, the experiences tells uh, about uh, like a person when he expresses about his experience that we can point out some of the things through his experience about his uh, um, family um, uh, environment his uh, peers struggle group all this gives a lot and so all these the combination of all these aspects only through we can uh, we can help a person with this whatever the situation it is okay so uh, that is what modern psychology also tells us that uh, the human behavior is what the person thinks what the person feels what the person experiences okay all these are related and uh, how you are going to measure all this? This is very important, isn't it? Uh, merely by um, uh, learning, uh, the, by being very thorough with the concept, that is very important for a student. But at the same time, you have to observe a particular individual. You have to observe. You have to interview. Okay, there, there are many uh, structured questionnaires so that if a person can um, answer all these questions whatever the uh, particular per related to that particular human being okay or there are intelligence tests there are laboratory experiments um, then uh, like uh, they also uh, also it is very important that um, uh, it is not uh, like through only through one session uh, you can understand about a person there may you may have to understand a, you cannot understand a person within one session or one sitting uh, sitting you may need to have different follow-up sessions okay you may have to have collateral contacts with that particular person collateral contacts means the person um, uh, may be related with many other aspects also okay like family friends peer group group uh, or, or uh, some other the social institutions, uh, education institution, all uh, the people related uh, with all these multidimensional aspects are also very important when you work with the person and all these matters a lot. And psychology tells all these are related to a particular person. Okay, because uh, uh, suppose a person uh, just now uh, we had a very um, like a very uh, um, heinous uh, uh, crime held, isn't it, uh, last day? Uh, a doctor was uh, stabbed so that uh, about that particular uh, criminal what it was said that uh, during his uh, like even though he is uh, um, like he's an alcoholic um, uh, he, his family members are not with him but when he was in the workplace he was very acceptable he, he, he had a very good character nobody pointed out that such problem was that or such criminal uh, the tendency uh, the person had okay but uh, when we see an act had happened uh, with the doctor that 
that was very much a shocking one isn't it so we cannot understand a person at what moment the person may behave so these are some of the psychology when you work with the person then only you will come to know and when the, when you work with the person that means you are working with an individual for a, to give some help or to help the particular person okay to help himself you have to uh, work out with all these aspects so behaviorism is very very important so branches of psychology and its applications psychology is a vast area and many studies have been developed and these had been divided into many many components here i have i have given only three of the component but more than that there are many there are many types of psychology like industrial psychology is there the word industry itself tells that you are um, understanding about the people working in industry okay behavioral psychology is now why express many much thing um, uh, and much uh, many aspects about the behaviorism the important of uh, uh, the human being the behavior pattern of the human being is very very important and the same way there is cognitive psychology cognitive psychology means how the particular person perceives a particular thing it is not necessary each and every person perceive the same thing there can be differences in understanding a particular aspect and that cognitive level uh, is to be understand and that particular study is there about the cognitive psychology so as um, uh, just it, uh, i said that it's a lot there's a lot uh, about uh, to study the psychology but uh, um, uh, as your time is limited or we have to learn about many subjects we we have we cannot go into that depth but it is good that whenever uh, you are into this field it is good that you learn more about different types of psychology because these learnings only will help you to help a person okay or you can work with that particular person that is abnormal psychology abnormal uh, means uh, the person who is little bit away from the normal maybe because of many situations and why that particular person is away from the normal situation why that particular person is uh, the seen little of deviations all these have to be studied and that is that's a particular branch of psychology called abnormal psychology there is educational psychology there is forensic psychology see now you came to isn't it you uh, You can understand that much of type of psychology, uh, different type of branches are there. The clinical psychology, it is the largest. Clinical psychology is known as the largest speciality area in the psychology. These things you might be thinking that why I have not given the explanation. Even though these th these psychologies are also very important, you have to learn more about these things also. But little bit of explanation is given in clinical psychology because uh, as a student of counseling, you may be dealing with the people to understand about their uh, dysfunction or about about their um, um, deviations in the behavior or they are not able to adapt in the situation or why they are restless or why they are not able to go and get along with the friends why they are not able to adjust with the family environment so clinical psychology is a little bit more important for us to learn of counseling okay clinical psychology is the largest speciality area in psychology as it's uh, it is said isn't it it is a large speciality area what does it do it includes the study and application of psychology for the purpose of understanding preventing and relieving psychologically based distress of dysfunction that what that is what you are all going to do with the human beings you are going to understand a person you are going to prevent the person you are giving some sort of support to the particular person okay um, and when there is a need of a expert you are going to refer that particular person for the expert uh, uh, like you are you are um, um, Uh, you are referring that particular person to a psychiatrist you are referring this particular person to a psychologist for further studies for further examinations so it is important that you need to have let, the knowledge on clinical psychology you have to understand um, uh, the uh, facial expressions you have to understand about the mental status of the particular person so understanding is very important if you want to need to prevent the particular person from any situation that also you have to involve in that uh, or you have to um, uh, help that person to get along with particular situation or how to cope the situation so clinical psychology is also a vast area of study then educational cycles social psychology see um, this is very important as we know that uh, the uh, the students those who are doing their b ed they have to understand about the child psychology or they need to study about the educational psychology i think each and every person must understand and moreover the students of counseling it is very important that we must understand about the um, school psychology or educational that includes the um, psychology or the uh, learning about the human mind and body of uh, the uh, student 
students okay particularly school going students or education institutions students those who are attending the educational institutions and what they do see here uh, it is given in the slide educational psychology is a branch of psychology concerned with schools teaching psychology educational issues and student concerns uh, as we all know in the current scenario isn't it uh, as in the very beginning itself i said a person a student who has uh, who has been admitted in a, a standard 1 is uh, uh, in circle with much anxiety much difficulties uh, and also the pressure from their parents even though as a small student now this is now in the month of june in, in the kerala scenario you see uh, the schools reopen in the month of june and you will see the parents as uh, when you talk with the parent you will come to know the person the student who has just started want to join in the standard one isn't it uh, the parents may be more concerned more uh, they will they will be have be having more anxiety or uh, stress about Uh, that particular child okay each and every um, uh, thing they will be having uh, a stress that even um, buying a school bag buying a school uh, school shoe or about the books uh, if, even though the books will be supplied by the school people these parents will be learning first and what to do with this uh, with this thing or they will be more excited how to teach a child uh, how to uh, manage all the things also these concerns will naturally influence the child also okay so actually the uh, what happens with when this influence when these uh, uh, tensions or these anxiety influences a child the child may be with little bit of uh, in difficulty or uh, will be uh, have a like um, will face difficult different situations maybe a fearful situation a frightening situation um, um, and having uh, uh, difficult to adjust with the other students or uh, uh, not having a good relationship with the teacher or fear of the teacher because these things may be in the environment or these influences might have given a negative uh, impact on the particular child maybe for every you see it is not a generalized statement but for some okay so here to understand about a child or understanding about uh, the particular situation of the uh, education school psychology also plays a very very important role okay so here particular it is mentioned that education psychology is a branch of psychology concerned with schools teaching psychology education issues and student concerns okay so what these psychologists do as i said that merely uh, learning uh, this uh, we have like you know uh, like uh, getting an overview of all this uh, the psychological aspect is not enough but it is important that we have to have a learning in, in an in depth learning and so um, there is a wide scope for you all people to learn more about different types of psychology and so here educational psychologists often study how students learn or work directly work with the students parents teachers administrators to improve the outcomes here also the, the, the role of the counselor is very very important and when you work if you have an opportunity to work or there and maybe the students in this group also working as a student counselor in many schools or colleges so it is like it is a multi dimensional assessment okay it is not you are working with the student only in a school but or in a college but you are working with the uh, parents also you are working with the teachers also you are working with administrators also then only you will come to know uh, what is uh, the um, how the child is um, um, what is the differences in child in a at home environment or in the school environment or uh, in the academics all these aspects have to study and so here the role of the education psychologist or the uh, student also is very very important here also we can have many test um, intelligence test about the particular person or different techniques can be used to understand about a particular and a, a, a cognitive behavior or perception of a student so school psychologists work within the education system to help children with emotional social and academic issues that is what i said in the beginning and also now also i said isn't it so here now in the current scenario um, you see and uh, uh, i have seen some parents there those who are working and those who are very busy in their schedule they do not have the time to sit with this uh, child uh, to explain each other of the of every basic things about uh, whatever it is so i i uh, just now during just taking the class uh, one of the incident uh, uh, struck me uh, i saw a parent who was working in a it sector and he has many different gadgets okay uh, he has different new new innovative gadgets where you uh, have uh, just click of uh, a thing uh, everything comes in that particular uh, gadget and uh, um, all the helps are given through this gadget okay so 
that particular parent uh, during the exam of that particular child the child is in fourth standard okay but uh, the particular parent or uh, the uh, parents uh, Par, um, see a child uh, has uh, parents but the mother is working somewhere else father is, father is the one who takes care of this particular child and the particular person is an IT sector he doesn't have much time to spend with that particular child during the exam so I saw what he said he, he gave a tap to that particular child and he asked the particular child to study with the help of the tap and whatever you want to know everything is there in the tap isn't it? So all these, uh, only the um, uh, these uh, uh, devices or digital devices may not help the child. The support of the parent is very important. The support of the parents is very important. The father and mother is included in the in the upbringing of the child, and so later later can be, isn't it? Some emotional support may lack, or the the particular child may be may not be have that much of confidence in him because there is nothing. Uh, the gadget doesn't tell us about a support system. Only the thing, whatever you need to have related to academy, that only is shown in the uh, gadget. Okay, the um, a pat in the shoulder of a child uh, is uh, not there by your father or by your mother. Uh, we were just discussing, isn't it? The need of educational psychologists is uh, growing more and more. And uh, you people have lots of uh, scope in these areas also. Okay. So uh, now the next, uh, again, I will go towards the uh, uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, the next is forensic psychology. You may be uh, like, uh, no, when uh, when there is uh, something criminal uh, act uh, taken place, uh, we uh, the forensic people come and uh, just uh, they, uh, they apply all those things or whatever the legal procedure has to be done or whatever the test is to be done. So this uh, psychology, uh, forensic psychology also uh, uh, now it's a uh, growing field where um, uh, it is a special, speciality area that deals with issues related to the psychology and the law. Wherein, uh, like, uh, um, suppose a murder had happened, okay, by all these related, why the particular person was, uh, well, like, uh, the act was done by the particular, uh, or why this crime was taken, all these related uh, to the forensic psychology, and this may involve studying the criminal behavior and treatments are working directly in the court system. So these uh, forensic psychologists also perform a wide variety of duties, including uh, assessing children in suspected child abuse cases, uh, preparing children to give testimony, or evaluating the mental competence of criminal suspects. OK, just now uh, we were uh, like we had a very uh, shocking case, isn't it, about the murder of uh, Dr. Vandana. So here, the, the forensic psychology plays a very important role. And uh, see, when uh, the particular the person who did the crime, when he was tested, uh, uh, he, it was found by the psychiatrist that he does, he, the person Person is not having any sort of psychiatric issues, but what's the reason why? Why he had such a uh, uh, like uh, why he was so aggressive? He wanted to kill a male doctor, but why that act was taken towards a female doctor? Or what is the reason behind that? All there are there are many many things. I'm just uh, looking. Hello. So all uh, these are very, there are many uh, clues or there are, there are many things hidden, okay, where uh, we cannot uh, understand a person. Naturally, nobody has uh, understood why that particular act was taken or why that particular person had, uh, at that point of time, why did he think of uh, doing such an act or uh, um, uh, like, is he, he, does he, he, did he have a regular sort of criminal behavior every time? Okay, or was this type of act was taken before also? So uh, there are many things to study about that particular human behavior, isn't it? This is just a very current uh, uh, hot issue now it's going on, isn't it? That is why I, the, to, to introspect or to learn more about that particular uh, uh, situation, I just uh, gave you this example. Okay, so forensic psychology also perform a wide variety of duties, like uh, finding out more and more criminal behavior in particular individual. Okay, and uh, these are some of the uh, different types of uh, psychology. Now we'll uh, go into the, we'll uh, just start with the unit two, the definition, uh, nature and importance of personality.
so these were some of the things uh, a peripheral idea about what is psychology a peripheral idea about the psychology if you have any doubts uh, you can just clarify, clarify in between okay and uh, um, as i said that the material has lots of things to study and it was already uh, instructions given to you isn't it that um, instructions were given to you that you have you can go through the text you can go through the contents and then uh, and i know that uh, in between these students uh, many of you may be practitioners uh, or uh, you may be involved in different types of uh, counseling uh, uh, areas or uh, different um, fields of counseling and so you can also share your ideas or views so the others may also get much knowledge about uh, uh, particular areas isn't it uh, the theoretical aspects or the background is very very important in fact but at the same time the experiences that you get along or that you have isn't it that is also that also gives much uh, uh, importance in our learning um, as like it is uh, it is unlike other subjects uh, uh, it is not only uh, a theoretical learning about the theories of the particular area or particular subject but at the same same time field experience is very also very very important and moreover when you are uh, in a field of counseling or when you are studying about the counseling as i said the uh, the practical situations are also very very important that is what um, uh, in the theoretical uh, background may help you to be in uh, the practical sessions also okay next is about the personality is it it when you just as a lay, lay person when you ask what is personality they may say that oh, yeah it's out an outward look of a person uh, the pers particular person's uh, uh, color height weight or uh, what you call uh, um, healthy hairs or uh, uh, um, yeah, like what you a uh, well dressed uh, situation or uh, um, like uh, what you call uh, the heavy makeup or all these going uh, on and off and we sitting a parlor beauty parlor we are making that is uh, that is what a uh, common person says isn't it but as a psychology as a, a part of a psychology or as a part of counseling it is uh, personality is not just the outward look of uh, a human being it is more than that isn't it so as um, a, a famous psychologist uh, alpert uh, alpert defines personality as the dynamic organization within the individual of those psychosocial systems that determine the unique adjustment to his environment that means a person who ha should have a balanced um, situation okay the balanced uh, a balance between the equilibrium of maintaining an equilibrium with the environment and with the society and that is what personality okay that is what we um, may see many people with some personality disorders or they are not able to adjust with the situation they may have uh, they may be very short tempered uh, or uh, they may have uh, um, like uh, aggressive behavior uh, or uh, conduct disorder or uh, like opposition defense disorders all these deviations may be because of the imbalance of that particular personality okay so that is personality it is uh, it is not an outward look but let me tell again it is a balance between an equilibrium between the environment and the people or environment of the society where you are able to adapt the situations in a better way or um, you, know, you are able to balance a situation you are able to cope up with the situations in a in a full presence of mind okay all this is related to personality okay so we'll see uh, some of the areas related to the personality and uh, um, and see Uh, it is very important that uh, as a student of counseling you must understand different personality disorders and for that we may need to have an in depth study naturally we may need to have an in depth study of all the matters but still uh, uh, you will get an idea or you uh, when you learn or when you understand something about the personality disorder it will be easy for you to understand the things and whether and you can decide whether this particular uh, person who is in difficulty needs a uh, um, um, uh, psychiatric help or near by telling uh, or informing or giving awareness about the particular uh, situation or about uh, the person situation the person may cope up with the situation all this will help to uh, then uh, this will help once you know what is personality okay so we'll see one by one uh, different areas of personality 
So just a little bit of uh, like points, uh, highlighted points, uh, which will help you. I think that is what I thought of preparing uh, the PowerPoint and which will give, uh, see, as I said, uh, the IGNO study material has a vast uh, um, uh, conceptual clarity in its book. So whenever you get the time or you, it is not whenever you get the time, you must be truly involved in the, in reading all the materials in a well-versed way so that you will uh, be getting to know more and more things and when you uh, when you will have a little bit of clarifications you will try to under you will try to research more on that particular area in this way only we will we'll be able to learn ourselves okay and that is very very important and in your field also it is very important to you to be updated with all the concepts okay then only you can help a person in counseling so we'll just see uh, the some of the areas. Okay, it's an uh, overview. Again, I'm telling it's an overview, but I have prepared certain uh, PPT on uh, slides. Okay, so that it will give a little bit of idea about the highlights of this personality. So I have given the term nature of personality. So personality is made up of characteristic patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that make a person unique. Personality originates within the individual and remains fairly consistent throughout the life. And that is the main uh, uh, part here. Okay, so it is uh, personality. Uh, when you work with the person, it is very important that you understand the person, the, uh, the thought patterns of that particular person, the characteristics, uh, the nature of the particular person, how uh, the, um, when, he's, uh, when he uh, interacts with you, what uh, changes you see in the interaction, or when you work with that particular person and the collateral contacts, what differences you see with that particular person. Sometimes what happens is that, see, when you work with the person, uh, it is uh, like some when, when you uh, individually, when you talk or handle a person, his views and uh, ideas may be different, but some other per people related to him or his family member or friends are with him. And when you have a combined uh, meeting with that particular uh, individual, the person with the problem, and related to the people, his viewpoints may be may differ, or he may try to change the uh, his views and ideas. Then, all this, that uh, will make you understand what type of person is, or what differences you see a particular person, why that particular person is behaving in such a way. Then you can work out with that person, and then you can help that particular. So, for that, personality is very important. That is what it tells about the patterns of thoughts, feelings and behaviors that make a person unique. And it originates within the individual. But each individual has a, a different personality. You cannot judge that every person is same. Okay, each and every individual have their own viewpoint, own value system, own uh, uh, perception about that particular uh, uh, area or particular whatever the element is. Okay, and this will remain fairly consistent throughout the life and that is also a difficult part that it will fairly it will be throughout the life and that is what personality is and also what the famous um, psychologist Alcott has said hasn't it so uh, some of the fundamental characteristics of personality some of the important characteristics of personality includes consistency see when you observe a person you have to observe all these areas see why i am telling all these things because you are going to work with the person this, this is not just writing uh, for the sake of uh, somebody or studying for the sake of somebody if you are interested to work um, in a counseling field it is important that you understand a person and the very part important part or the challenging part is that you're working with the person isn't it a living being you're working with a living being it is not that like uh, uh, you're working with a um, uh, computer or you're working with uh, like you uh, like what you call um, you're working with so many uh, gadgets that doesn't reply respond that doesn't give us response but here it is not at that case you're working with the person who is able to react towards you also isn't it so it is very important that you understand a person very very uh, uh, importantly you must understand a person in a better way so consistency there is a generally a recognizable order or regularity to behaviors essentially people act in the same ways or similar ways in the variety of situations okay so uh, the uh, the person uh, uh, many environmental factors or other social factors or family factors or working area might um, have made this person in such a way that he is behaving uh, the behavior patterns may differ okay so that is what um, consistency the person may stick on that particular situation wherever he is then psychological and physiological 
psychological and physiological. That is also one of the characteristics of personality. Personality is a psychological construct, but research suggests that it is also influenced by biological process and needs. As we had uh, different uh, criticism from different uh, psychologists in the very beginning when I was giving the introduction. They said that it is, uh, um, some said that it is structuralism, some said it is functionalism, some uh, argued that it is about behaviorism, but it is a mixture of both, isn't it? The personality is a psychological construct, but it is also influenced by biological process and needs. So, uh, uh, like it is, um, see, um, when uh, uh, embryo starts developing in, in mother's womb, uh, still uh, from that time onwards, uh, some uh, that many things gets affected, isn't it? The uh, that particular uh, expected uh, mother's uh, view, uh, like um, what the situation, the environment, the way that particular expectant mother uh, um, relates to a particular thing, or uh, the food habits, or the uh, stress, or the working pattern, all these may affect a particular particular uh, um, uh, uh, fetus. Okay, so all this in the later stage also, there may be some of the fixation or that, that may affect a particular person also. So both the psychology and physiology aspects are important in developing a person. Then impact behaviors and actions. Personality does not just influence how we move and respond in our environment. It also uh, causes us to act in certain ways. Okay, that is what uh, impact. That is what the example of that particular crime held, isn't it? Just last week about uh, um, um, uh, stabbing a doctor. Okay, that particular situation might have influenced that particular person. Okay, uh, to uh, have that act, uh, sudden act, uh, which nobody. Uh, thought of will have such an um, cr criminal uh, 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 so criminal um, act uh, may be held. Okay, that was a shocking experience to each and everyone. Even though there were many people, it's a big, big organization, big hospital where there are so many employees, but nobody thought like such an act will happen. So that is what you just. Uh, uh, um, uh, there, there, there are many influences. Our environment may influence, but certain situations uh, may. Um, trigger that particular individual to act certain behavior. So impact of behaviors and actions also make a person. Multiple expressions. This is also one of the characteristics of personality. Multiple expressions. So personality is displayed in more than just uh, in more than just behavior. It can also be seen in our thoughts, feelings, close relationship and other social interactions. A person may have different expressions as i said isn't it uh, if you handle a person um, when when the person is alone and you're speaking that particular person you're working with an individual the expression of the thought behavior or the thought patterns of that particular person may be different and when there is influence of some other uh, um, uh, other stimuli or some other uh, uh, aspects that expression may differ okay so it is very hard for uh, a particular person uh, for for us to work with for people of uh, different expressions um, maybe that uh, uh, that uh, situation uh, is because of certain influences or certain um, um, uh, persuasions okay so there can be multiple expressions of a person also even though even just uh, you can understand about your own person, uh, about your about yourself. Just try to introspect about yourself, isn't it? The certain situations make us to do something, or certain situations sometimes tells about to have a multiple tasking or multiple expressions. Also, you have to under, when you work with the person, you it is um, uh, like you have you have to have a clear idea about the person that the person may have different expressions also. Okay, so why these are these things are told to you because you are going to work with a person or you're going to work with a human being isn't it human being so as i said human being has a capacity to react okay or uh, to show different types of behaviors or reactions so in the same way they may have different expressions even okay so that is what this is a very important aspect of personality then um, uh, type and uh, trait theories of personality. It is very clearly uh, designed or uh, in detail it is given in your text. I'm giving a very few 
points uh, uh, about the personality or type and trait theories of personality okay so uh, trait theories that is innate uh, behavior of a person is also uh, uh, innate behavior of the person also influences uh, the person's um, upbringing behavior or uh, the interaction all these effects so as it is like these areas are very very important when you work with the person um, uh, see it is not a person when you when you uh, it is not an outward look as i said it is just not an outward look of the person there can be many hidden areas also about the person so these uh, traits uh, the in uh, the traits or uh, the inborn uh, um, influences what whatever the person might have uh, uh, received okay by birth also influences a person so that is why many trait theories of the personality have been come up or many many psychologists from the researches uh, have been done on the trait theories of personality okay so here the it is said as type and trait theories of personality both focus on people's personal characteristics systems that address personality as a combination of qualities or dimensions are called trait theories okay systems that address personality as a combination of qualities or dimensions about the person's behavior nature the way he interact the way he uh, works uh, the way he walks each and every aspect defines the um, uh, person okay it is all included in the personality it is not just a one or two aspect but it covers many aspects okay so that is called trait theories and that is what is defined as the trait theory the trait approach to personality is focused on differences between individual and that is very very important as a student of counseling you have to un you have you should imbibe in yourself that each individual is unique okay see i have an experience uh, of a 10 years experience of working as a counselor in a family counselling center and i used to um, attend many cases and each case i was i used to wonder that oh this also happens in in uh, like uh, these are there are people with such difficulties also oh my god i have said because each individual is unique and uh, each person when you talk with the person uh, uh, like it was a great experience or shock. sometimes it was a shocking experience to me or it was a special learning to me also about an individual said these things also happen some of the person so Uh, um each individual is different and you have to understand this why these things are being told to you when you work with this the same thing you might be thinking that i'm why i'm repeating uh, the same thing always in this isn't it but we have to imbibe in ourselves that all these things differs or each individual is different and uh, the uh, whatever the traits or the differences you see that is that cannot be same in each and every person okay so the trait approach to personality is focused on differences between individuals okay the combination and interaction of various traits forms a personality that is unique to each individual okay so it's in very simple sentence it is mentioned um like the combination and interaction of various traits forms a personality so this is very important when you work because as see at the very beginning i as i said that if you are very much compassionate or you are very much passionate or you are very much committed to work with the human beings it is it is a challenging role okay and then uh, you have to understand about the combination and the interaction of various traits also and that is also one of the aspect of personality so trait theory is focused on identifying and measuring these individual personality characteristics so trait theory is focused on identifying and measuring Uh, these individual personality categories well known theorist gordon alcott categorized these theories into three level okay so many theorists have given uh, different uh, different ideas okay they have studied a lot they have done researches on human beings okay as i said it is not easy to work with the people or with the human being but we must uh, like appreciate these psychologists who had worked so much isn't it among you also there may be many students those who are attending the class may be we will be trying to work on more and on more people isn't it? i wish that you all work with the people you try to come into consensus you can do the research on uh, these areas about studying and human being okay so here the famous theorist gordon alcott uh, uh, categorized these traits into three level cardinal traits then um, uh, 
and then the other important central traits then secondary traits okay so these are some of the three types of traits cardinal traits central traits and secondary traits so what is cardinal trait this all some of the no see um, if, if this little bit when i explain you something sometimes it may be confusing one one or it is little bit it may even may have difficult to understand because maybe may for many people these this subjects are this area uh, may be new okay and um, just uh, merely attending uh, a two hour class or a four hour class four hour sessions uh, will not uh, like give you the whole idea but it is good that you update yourself you learn more you learn to read the text try to uh, read the text then you will get an idea about all the things okay so here cardinal traits the traits that dominate in individuals whole life often to the point that the person becomes known specifically for these traits okay these are some of the uh, like we can say that this is a little high level or uh, this is a high fi trait this is okay those who are very much um, um, like consistent in their uh, uh, thoughts perceptions okay and these these are called cardinal traits people with such personalities often become so known for these traits and their names are often synonymous with these qualities okay these people are, can be called as exceptions exceptional people or uh, super people okay so uh, they uh, they may have special uh, uh, traits or capabilities or um, uh like um, a special type of characteristics okay where they showcase a difference between the common people and uh, the these people okay so they that uh, the traits that you see in these people will be very unique and so why that is why they are called as cardinal traits for example uh, we can see some of the um, traits cardinal traits like freud uh, freudian uh, like or uh, don john some of there are some people who are very uh, famous and they um, uh, like they may have these traits and um, a special type of trait so that is why they are called cardinal central traits these uh, traits like these are the general characteristics that form the basic foundations of personality each and every human being have these traits these central traits while not as dominating as cardinal traits are the major characteristics you might use to describe another person such as intelligent honest shy anxious are considered as central trait okay um, there may, there are many traits uh, like inborn trait and the uh, like um, people are always uh, people may be intelligent in different iq level some are some may be honest all the time some may be shy. all these some of the behavior patterns what uh, uh, persons uh, showcase can be called as central traits so some of the some as we can see some people isn't it some people are very shy or uh, they are having difficulty you know, to face the crowd uh, or uh, some people uh, like be like very uh, special people where they may be they are very confident they they are very confident or over confident in facing each and every situation so these are some of the traits which they have have imbibed already or uh, it is called a central trait Uh, secondary traits are that they are sometimes related to attitudes or definition, nature, and importance of personality. Some examples would be getting anxious when speaking to a group or impatient while waiting in line. Okay, so uh, there these are some of the secondary traits. In the same way, when you just go through the textbook, uh, you will find in unit two. Okay, um, uh, different people uh, have uh, different uh, psychologists have explained different types of traits. Uh, Raymond Scatters they have sixteen personality factors. Okay, the descriptors of low range as well as some of the descriptors of high range. Okay, some uh, some there are people with uh, some low traits or uh, some uh, weak traits. Uh, okay, like as you call, uh, we say that impersonal, distant, cool, reserved. All these are some of the uh, traits which are very low in nature. Okay, so, and at the same time, opposite to that or contrary to that, we can say that there are people who are very much highly high, active, um, uh, attentive. 
or uh, they were maybe very involved in uh, among the society all these are some of the uh, high wage so people uh, what what i mean to say is that uh, we have to uh, when you work with the person you have to understand this is it we cannot just have a um, you know, judge uh, we cannot judge that see this uh, why can't you be like that why can't you be like that okay each person will have their own personality and maybe this may define how the person uh, um, is okay so that is why we must try to understand about the traits in the same way british psychologist uh, hans einsek also has developed a model of personality okay like introversion extraversion uh, emotional stability or psychotism all these different types of uh, uh, traits are there in the same way many other psychologists have also described it is there in your text uh, it's clearly defined okay and whenever you get you can just go through that uh, text then some there were some uh, see whatever is wherever we are there may whatever you are in okay naturally there may be as uh, other part also isn't it issues and controversies in personality theory and research uh, these when uh, many theories were found out by many famous uh, uh, psychologists but there there had some issues and controversies also okay uh, so genes and personality say some uh, criticize that genes are very much uh, genes influence the personality genes in the uh, human uh, like the gene in the human being may influence a personality one is perhaps the oldest issue in psychology nature versus nurture okay so um, uh, it is inborn a trait what uh, develops a personality but some uh, controversy some had a controversial like controversy or some criticize that it is not only the nature it is not only the inborn but whatever the uh, environment is uh, the person particular individual has adapted that uh, decides the personality and so that there were some uh, uh, like criticisms the nature nurture debate really concerns relative impact of heredity and environment Uh, some people say that heredity alone plays a very important uh, role in uh, developing a person but some said that not only heredity but also environment also plays a very important and i think um, uh, what we when we work with the people sometimes when we talk with the people or when we interact or when we explore that particular person when we assess the human being to work with the particular human being uh, sometimes uh, it is i'm not generalizing a statement uh, it is not always but sometimes it is uh, very clear that environment have molded that particular person or environment had made such a person uh, to be like that okay it is not only the hereditary part itself but uh, the, there is a role of the environment also if there was a better environment to that particular human being maybe that particular person uh, might not have been uh, had deviations in his behavior okay just like the example what in kerala we faced last uh, that the same example i'm continuing so that you can understand in a better way uh, if you work with that particular uh, person who did a crime is it a heinous crime um, if you work with the person or uh, it is not uh, uh, the person alone is responsible maybe we have to understand about his upbringing about his childhood his about uh, even uh, uh, as i said uh, about uh, that particular uh, mother uh, who gave birth to this particular child this is a particular that particular person who uh, who committed that particular crime maybe the mother's uh, situation when she was carrying this fetus okay and then after that uh, after the birth of that particular person how how was his upbringing was there a love of the parent or support of the father and mother about his schooling about his Uh, teachers who taught him about the neighbors all this might have uh, given uh, played a role in this particular what was the reason why this particular person was alcoholic why he used to have a difficult situation with his wife and the children all these uh, will uh, means there 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 can be many uh, areas where you have to work with and then why this particular person has become so uh, what i want mean to say is that environment also plays a very important role even the hereditary uh, factors we say that okay you cannot say that uh, yeah father was a murderer naturally the son will also become a murderer you cannot say like this isn't it maybe some of the situation might have to have this uh, so and when it also 
place a very but there was a controversy that only nature but nature versus nurture okay i think you will also uh, you will also uh, there's a question mark before us uh, also or there's a point to think that uh, nature versus nurture okay there is a debatable area virtually no one believes that nature alone or nurture alone completely determines the course of our development Okay, that is what I gave you an example, isn't it? Not only the nature, but nurture also plays a very important role in developing the personality. So when you see, you might be thinking what I told in the beginning and uh, deviating from my part, isn't it? It was like uh, um, um, natural, I'm not deviating, but it is not only the innate, but also the other part is also very important. Okay, so psychologists today agree. That development is shaped by the interaction of hereditary environment. Uh, uh, yes, I was also telling the same um, uh, thing, and also the psychologist also have come to a consensus that the development is shaped by the interaction of hereditary environment. There, you have to think more about when you have taken this subject and you are going to work with the people. It is very important that when you understand a person, you have to understand about the persons. And not only the heredity but also the environment not only the environment but also the heredity each and every aspect so there's a great uh, uh, like no there's a great effort that you have to take when you work with the person you have to explore the person you have to properly assess that person it is not just it is a continuous process it's assessing it is a assessment is a continuous process from the beginning till uh, you are working with the person with different follow-up sessions you have to work with the person finding out uh, see in the beginning what the particular my, person might have expressed may not be the same when he uh, when you meet in the third follow-up session or you when you meet with the for fourth follow-up session that uh, the um, uh, whole picture might have uh, changed or there uh, may you see differences so that is what but it uh, we, like you know psychologists have studied and they also say that hereditary environment also plays a very important role so importance of personality importance the more you know about personalities the better you'll be able to understand why people do the things they do and how to communicate with them isn't it now see um, it is uh, we are working with the person we are working with the human being we are working with the individual it is important that uh, all these may matter a lot personality and behavior in work settings psychologists have long recognized the importance of work in our lives in fact uh, uh, those who are specialized in industrial psychology, um, like studying the behavior in work settings, all these uh, matter a lot. If a person uh, is happy with the situation, suppose a person working in an industry is happy with the, his employer or the environment, he will try to um, give his input in a better way. Okay, isn't it? We, even we also like that. We are also like that. If you're happy with the situations, you're happy with the working conditions, you may, be, you may like to work with a particular situation and you may uh, give your maximum, isn't it? In the same way, a child in a school setting, if you see, if a child is happy with the teacher or the child is happy with the situation, the child may show interest in the studies. But at the same, same way, vice versa, if you say, if you see that the child is not interested uh, in any in, uh, means uh, the ch child is not getting a such a friendly environment or he has a fear of teacher or any other uh, situations uh, he may may not show interest or he may he may develop some emotional concerns okay the same way uh, when a, a person human being isn't it so personality and behavior in work settings that is what it is meant uh, so, uh, like uh, we will see, these are personality and the job performance and the role of personality in, in uh, workplace aggression. So, these are some of the two aspects uh, like personality and behavior in work settings. So, uh, that is uh, just an example importance of personality. So, um, uh, person uh, with balanced, uh, uh, balanced uh, equilibrium or a proper equilibrium, uh, the person can have a better or he can showcase better aspects in wherever he is. But if it is not, the person may have uh, a workplace aggression. Okay. So, these two things are very, very important. This is just to understand. Okay. This is what I have explained here is to just to mention mentioned here is just to tell uh, that these things play a very important role in a person's life clinical the next is clinical importance of personality as we uh, in earlier uh, slides we saw clinical um, psychology is one of the 
upcoming area in psychology where uh, uh, we are we are uh, we are going to understand about the person's uh, um, each and every aspect isn't it about uh, we are studying us we having a, we are having a st scientific study we are having a diagnosis treatment also so clinical part clinical see when when a person suffers from any of any of the physical uh, problem uh, the person uh, attends a clinic clinician isn't it or to practice a therapy okay but in uh, our country as such we are lucky so uh, we uh, we are learning also about the different therapies and uh, in your textbook in unit 3 it is uh, given different therapies psychoanalytic theory therapy psychoanalytic approach by freud uh, about the learning about the conscious and unconscious mind of uh, the human being mm. Okay, the, um, uh, what he, the particular individual feels about uh, the particular uh, uh, the person itself, how he is in the situation when he is unconscious or when the conscious uh, mind. There is a clash between it, ego and super ego. And when you talk with the people, you will come to know that uh, the what range the particular person is, uh, what is situation, whether he is an if situation, whether he is a, an ego situation, or whether he is a super uh, situation. When there, when he, when the individual is able to cope up with these three situations, then uh, the, there's a need of help by an expert okay to balance the situation so that is what uh, there is an approach of psychoanalytic uh, uh, theory the other is client centered therapy the, the next therapy is about client centered therapy the term itself tells about client centered okay so here the therapist uh, has a role but the uh, the most important role is played by the uh, client okay client has to be made uh, uh, is to be re made re uh, given more uh, like realize that the particular person is responsible whatever uh, the whatever the uh, whatever the life situation is uh, the uh, the client has to cope up with the situations it is the client who can improve or it can bring changes in that particular person here uh, the therapist is a, a plays a non directive role okay there will be directions but it will be indirect role here so so that type of therapy is helpful for some uh, clients where they will realize what is the negative in them, what is uh, the weaknesses in them, how to handle the situation. Uh, now, when I am in such a situation, I have to. So in this situation, the particular uh, client should have a self-motivation. Okay, motivates that I, have, I am like, there should be a realization also that he is suffering with such a situation and to cope up with what I have to do. So he has to do the homework. Uh, he has to uh, bring himself a change in himself and that is why this is called as client-centered therapy okay we'll just go to the ppt about uh, like uh, who has developed this theory and this is very important uh, you can uh, uh, apply this therapy uh, to the people um, who are who are very much uh, like you know um, uh, uh, very have a wrong perception on many ideas so you can make him them improve or you can provide uh, such situations where they can realize themselves so psychotherapeutic approaches it is a uh, psychotherapy it's a treatment of mental and emotional disorders through the use of psychological techniques used to uh, design to encourage communication of conflict and develop insight into problems with the goal being relief of symptoms changes in behavior or so we can uh, see as i said uh, the, um, the the students of counseling once you um, get in a, 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 like a qualification of uh, uh, this counseling or you have a specialized field of counseling you can apply this therapy um, towards the human beings who have difficulties uh, uh, with uh, like in behavior or social and vocational functioning or any personality growth So client-centered therapy. Hope this can be seen. Is it clear? Is it seen to you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So client-centered, as I was telling about the client-centered therapy, it is also known as person-centered therapy or non-directive or Rogerian therapy. See, these terms to uh, be more familiar. That is why I thought of showing the slide. Okay. So when you learn, when you read or when you go through the slides, this will be uh, registered in your uh, this one. Okay, so client-centered therapy is also known as person-centered, non-directive, or uh, Rogerian therapy. It's an approach to counseling and psychotherapy. And this was uh, developed in early 1940s and 1950s by psychologist 
Carl Rogers. So the psychologist is Carl Rogers. Uh, why this has been shown? Because when you uh, like uh, when you write an exam, also this is important when you give an approach like this. Okay, given uh, what is client center therapy to your introduction, you can uh, include these things. So in this, the therapist's role is that of a facilitator or an enabler, and to provide a therapeutic relationship. And this approach places much of the responsibility for the treatment process on the client. Non-directive, as I said, the here the role of the therapist is a non-directive role. In this technique, see how this is done. Okay, as I said, see um, uh, when you practice, it is good that you have more knowledge on the therapies. But as a uh, general understanding, uh, these things are there for us to understand. Or else, when if you are interested, you can uh, learn more on the therapies and in QN you can practice with the human beings. Okay, so what is how this is applied in this technique? The therapist. Create a comfortable, non-judgmental environment by demonstrating congruence, genuineness, empathy, and unconditional positive regard uh, towards the patients while using a non-directive approach. So here uh, we have to have certain uh, um, skills and techniques towards a particular client. Okay, that uh, feel at home. Okay, um, uh, you are the special to us. These type of non-directive, it is maybe certain actions or performances by the therapist uh, showcases that the person feels that, okay, I'm special uh, to this particular therapist. The, pers uh, the therapist actually is very much involved in me. And such an act, that should, uh, you should create such an ambience, okay? You should have a car, you should create a comfortable ambience, feel at home ambience, a non-judgmental environment, empathy, that is you are able to, you are putting yourself in another's place, isn't it? You're understanding that particular client uh, from his own point of view, your genuine, uh, you are have you are you are not uh, have you are having unconditional positive regard. You are not uh, want to gain uh, any benefit of the out of that client. Uh, naturally, you are very much sincere to that particular client. Okay, so that is and with the non-directive approach. That is also very important non-directive approach. So the therapist seeks to increase the client's insight and self-understanding through informal clarifying questions. Okay, so the client uh, may be encircled with lots of confusions, with lots of doubts, with lots of uh, uh, clarification. So here uh, we are giving an opportunity so that uh, in, during these situations by applying all these techniques, the clarifier, the wrong notions of that particular client is also being a little bit, oh, uh, we are trying to overcome the wrong notions also, whatever the client has undergone or the orientation of the client in certain areas. And so, and tell, let me tell you one thing also that this therapy is not like in just one session, uh, you cannot uh, get uh, um, uh, final outcome. Of, okay, this has to be uh, repeated or the follow-up sessions are very, very important. In counseling, the follow-up sessions are very, very important. The minimum follow-up session, I think it's minimum four. Okay, so uh, minimum four, then only we can come towards a client or understand about the client or study about the client. The therapy means it's a final stage where you're going to give the treatment. There are different steps in counseling. Later on, you will be learning by uh, uh, other academic counselors also the steps in counseling, isn't it? One is uh, you're exploring, then uh, you're finding out the problem, then you're going, uh, finding out uh, how the problem uh, can be partialized or how the goals can be found out then there's a treatment or the treatment what type of treatment should be given um, so all these includes then later on the treatment includes the type of therapy that is to be given okay so that will take maybe uh, after five fifth session or sixth session it is not on a sudden you cannot uh, you cannot apply this ther ther therapy once you understand the person once you come to know each and every aspect of the client then only later uh, then only you can think of applying a therapy okay so uh, suppose the client has wrong notions and many things, then you are uh, giving a responsibility to the client. So that is why these, these are called client-centered therapy. And so in uh, clarifying the questions. Okay. The next uh, one of the different type of therapy is rational emotive therapy. Rational. Uh, the rational term itself gives, uh, tells about that uh, the, uh, the client sh should have a logical uh, reasoning, isn't it? There should be some reason um, towards uh, what, uh, what he thinks. Okay. 
uh, there may be individuals who may have uh, illogical reasoning or uh, some of the um, uh, wrong understanding about any of the aspect and so that may create later in later periods that may become severe and that may go into problem which is unable to cope up okay the which may be may, which may become unable to handle uh, uh, the situations uh, by the clients itself and that uh, situation and in this type of situations uh, the therapist applies a different type of therapy called rational emotive therapy okay is it clear rational emotive therapy so now it is called rational emotive behavior therapy rebt okay previously it was called as rational therapy or rational emotive therapy is a comprehensive active directive philosophically and empirically based psychotherapy okay it is a, a vast wider type of therapy very directive very empirically tested result oriented based psychotherapy which focuses on resolving emotional and behavior problems and disturbances and enabling people to lead happier and more fulfilling lives okay so this helps to resolve the emotional um, conflict in uh, one's uh, pers in personality and the different behavior problems also okay so um, here also see when this these are some of the very little understanding you have to go on you have to uh, have to update your knowledge okay that is my suggestion so rebt was created and developed by the american psychotherapist and psychologist albert ellis see so, yeah, you must know isn't it was the founder or who has developed so this was developed by american psychotherapist and psychologist who was inspired by many of the teachings of asian greek roman and modern philosophy rebt is one of form of cognitive behavior therapy okay so um, like um, now uh, these uh, behavior therapy learning behavior therapies uh, learning theories are applied uh, there are many clinics where the psychologist or the therapist uh, apply rebt where the people uh, now we see there's a vast uh, population of the people where uh, they develop any knowledge or um, they may uh, they they gain many informations isn't it there are many um, uh, like medias where you get lots of informations and sometimes what happens these informations may create some problem in one of the individual in, in many individuals okay this is what what i have uh, uh, like sometimes when i talk with the adolescent uh, people or uh, see they they are they have learned so much of thing but they are they have difficulty in deciding whether this knowledge what they have gained through this uh, digital world is uh, correct or uh, whether to uh, apply or all these things see so that uh, sometimes what happens they may have uh, they may develop irrational ideas in many of the aspects that is what the current scenario or the current situation is isn't it uh, now everyone each one of you in the class and the session those who are attending we are uh, we are all uh, like that only if you want to know something what you're going to do you just uh, google isn't it you know, because every time you have a gadget in your just uh, um swiping your thumb may uh, get all the informations but uh, there are so many informations we it uh, sometimes becomes difficult for us to uh, of, uh, have a final uh, decision as whether to follow this or not to follow this isn't it that sometimes creates irrational ideas in oneself and um, that will uh, uh, that will create some changes in us or some um, uh, what uh, what uh, changes in the behavior patterns of the individual or the thinking capacity and so that is what we have irrational ideas and here is in if it goes beyond the limit the person needs a help isn't it external help and then so uh, now these type of clinics are up in on rise isn't different behavioral therapists are there those who are trying to change the behavior of an individual because they have developed many irrational ideas or irrational knowledge or in, in some of the aspect okay so um, rational uh, human beings as responsible hedonistic hedonistic Uh, means uh, like self-indulgent. They are many. Uh, sim they are indulging in many of the areas. What I said just now. Uh, we develop knowledge through many. Uh, now we have many sources uh, through which we can develop our knowledge. But sometimes these indulgences becomes uh, 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 provides a negative result also. Okay, so 
uh, uh, yes, human beings and in the sense that they strive to remain alive and to achieve some degree of happiness. However, it holds that humans are prone to adopting irrational beliefs and behaviors stand in the way of the achieving their goals and purposes. So that is what uh, we learn, which is uh, that is, uh, uh, and we learn uh, many things uh, which are uh, which we are not uh, we are not able to decide whether these learnings will be useful to us or whether these uh, beliefs and behaviors are uh, in a proper way or. So what happens, we develop lots of irrational behaviors and we are able to balance ourselves and there's a lots of confusion among the individual. And so this therapy may help you to have an rational ideas or reasoning reasons for any of the things. So rational emotive behavior provides all this help. Okay. So in the same way, there are some other uh, theoretical aspects also. Um, other approaches also, behavioral approaches like uh, learning theories, classical conditioning theory, operant conditioning theory, um, the theory of reinforcement, learning theories, okay, through which uh, many of the situations can be handled uh, in the proper way. Okay, so uh, there are many uh, therapies uh, where uh, the uh, if uh, one is expert can apply uh, towards the individual in um, coping up with the situation and um, uh, regular follow-ups. And I want to tell one thing is that uh, the follow-up is very important. Uh, it is uh, you may have different you may have different uh, you have to have different sessions uh, with the um, uh, individual who is having such a problem. And so once you, if you are uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, practice this therapist it is important that we must have a well you must be well versed with the therapy okay but to have a general understanding about or which type of therapy should be applied um, we we can have a we must have a theoretical knowledge and your, your text in unit 3 uh, tells about the different therapies and in that reinforcement theory is very important condition theory condition by giving certain conditions uh, we can change the behavior of uh, one individual okay or positive reinforcement reinforcements that means giving some motivation or push okay so if you are giving a push a positive push that may help the person to up, uh, to overcome the situation or to enhance uh, the uh, situation what uh, in what he is right now okay or uh, to motivate to end that may encourage the person to have a better thought so these type of therapies um, will help uh, individual to cope with the situation and uh, these therapies as uh, it is uh, like uh, 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 see we cannot it's not necessary to term see this a uh, therapy or therapist itself has to do but certain things uh, we can uh, we can have an approach towards the individual see as a uh, nowadays it is also said that we can have an eclectic type of approach eclectic type of approach means have you heard about eclectic have you about eclectic eclectic approach anybody is there anybody who can tell what is eclectic yeah so now see um, uh, we uh, we have come to know so many of different types of approaches isn't it so eclectic approach it is said that we have a, a little bit of uh, what you call a, a flexibility that you can mix many therapies you can mix many techniques and then apply and it towards an individual okay and that mixing of different therapies or mixing of different approaches is called eclectic approach mix of many therapies or mix so in some places in a particular person if the particular person needs an irrational uh, motive for behavior therapy that is okay other than that that the person needs a reinforcement therapy or the uh, approach that also can be mixed while you're working with an individual and mixing of different therapies mix of all is called eclectic, eclectic approach and nowadays it is said that um, when you're working with the client or when you're working with the people we can have eclectic approach also okay so these are some of the uh, areas uh, where uh, we can uh, help the people uh, and uh, uh, and it is very important to understand a person then only you can go with the treatment
that is what every time i'm telling you repeatedly i'm telling once you have to study about the person in in, in every aspect okay uh, because as i said before that i have an experience of uh, working uh, 10 years in a counseling center uh, in in the early in when uh, the when the uh, when an individual expresses uh, uh, the the same case may not be when after a four or five sessions we see a change we see the entire picture changes okay so what we assessed or where what we did the homework about that particular individual is not now the next the whole story changes then again we have to go to the moment so it may take 10 to 5 sessions even okay and even uh, the particular uh, uh, just um, uh, knowing a particular individual we cannot decide a uh, situation we have to understand this other uh, aspects also other assessments that is called multi dimensional assessment and through that only we can come to know about a particular person and these things are very very important when you work with the person or when you work with the client because now as you have opted for this uh, um, course i think uh, if you are interested in practicing naturally if you want to practice you have to practice with the human being and understanding the human being is very very important and that is a challenging task also that is what i questioned before you about okay so uh, i will stop and we'll see at 2 pm with the other aspects okay in